God's grace in the dispensation of grace. We are in the dispensation of God's grace. Ephesians 3, 1 and 2. Now let me tell you, since I was a little kid, I heard about grace. But of course, in the Roman Catholic Church where I was brought up because I was born and raised Roman Catholic in Italy, of okay, course, they were talking about the sacraments of grace. So they say you are access, access, you can access the grace of God through the sacraments. Mm. Which now I know it's totally wrong, but I didn't know then. So honestly, I have a great sympathy and compassion for those who don't know. That's why I preach. I know sometimes I can be aggressive and I apologize if I can. Uh, to be too aggressive, but I really want to help people to come out from the slavery religion and find out the truth of the Word of God. <clears throat> then when I turned Evangelical Pentecostal and I was at the age of 23, and I stayed such 40 years until 2012 practically, I knew, I heard grace, grace, but never as grace being the dispensation of the grace of God. Never. So I didn't know to what extent and how glorious it is to be in the dispensation of God's grace. Once again, I know that many of my friends of that time they were in good faith but wrong. You can have good intentions, be in good faith but wrong, and it's still wrong. So I owe to the Word of God and to the teachings of the Apostle Paul this glorious reality that you come to know the truth, the word of truth. So let's go into it. God's grace in the dispensation of grace. <clears throat> We are in the dispensation of grace. Ephesians 3, 1 and 2. What is written? For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Notice, it doesn't say the prisoner of Julius Caesar, even though he was in Rome, in prison in Rome. He doesn't consider himself a prisoner of the temporal power of the Roman Empire, but he's the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. Let's really get this clear. It's got a special mission, mission, sorry, for us Gentiles. And then he's asking, if you have heard <clears throat> of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, very, very good. Praise God for this. So let's review how Paul describes how God operates today. <clears throat> we are saved by grace. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. So in the dispensation of grace, the dispensation of the grace of God, we are saved by grace. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not the works, lest any man should boast. Now this is fundamentally important to understand. Our flesh would like to boast. Jesus Christ himself in his earthly ministry to Israel said the flesh profits nothing. Okay? The words I speak to you, they are spirit, they are life. Now, these are the words of Christ that continues to speak from heaven. The reason glorified Christ is speaking through the Apostle Paul to us now, 
So we are saved by grace. We walk by grace. Romans 6, 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. It's not a master. For you are not under the law, but under grace. <clears throat> now, you might say, oh yeah, I understand, but why do I still sin? You still carry around this corpse. <clears throat> yeah, that's what it is. Until the grave, until you are on earth, being saved and sealed by grace, you still can sin. And eventually it happens. And don't feel destroyed and depressed and think, oh, you know, I'm in the world. That's a reality for everyone, including Paul. Go and read Romans 7, when he says, Wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Hmm. Then God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, this so is not an encouragement to sin, like many people think. Oh, well then, because you're under grace, just go... You don't need any encouragement to sin. It's a condition of the flesh. Now, you need to reckon yourself to be dead indeed with Christ and alive unto God. And we walk by grace. So we are saved by grace. We walk by grace. We stand in grace. Romans 5.2 by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Grace is needed <clears throat> to teach us to live godly. I have, I think, 1,001 frogs this morning. Uh, we just entered winter in Western Australia. <laughs> We're not used to winter. This part of the world is very warm. And then, suddenly, abruptly, winter comes with rain and temperature goes down. And we get all sorts of disturbances, including frogs. <clears throat> so I apologize for my frogs. <laughs> Grace is needed to teach us to live godly. Titus 2, 11, 13. For the grace of God that brings salvation, notice what it does, has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. So, while daily we walk and daily we have the conflict between the spirit and the flesh, knowing we are saved by grace, knowing that we are under grace, no matter the law, we desire to learn what grace, the grace of God is teaching us. Okay? So we can walk on the grace. In the meantime, we are looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Now, this is called, generally speaking, the rapture even though the world is catching up on the body of Christ. This event, I need to say this, is imminent, meaning it could really happen at any time, but is not possible to determine, not the times, not the season, and nothing is happening on earth is the harbinger of this event. Because God didn't give us any point of reference 
and is not connected to the prophetic po program, which is in suspension, so to say, since the Lord called and commissioned Paul in Acts 9, Acts 9, Acts 22, Acts 26. And Israel, in Acts 28, is completely fallen. There is no Israel God on earth. So whatever is happening is unfortunately the typical terrible things that mankind does wars destruction and just you know this is not the kingdom of god on earth like some people want to dream about this is actually a present evil world so what did we learn until now we are saved by grace we walk by grace, we stand in grace, rejoicing in hope of the glory of God. Grace is needed to teach us to live godly, and then God is able to make all grace abound towards us. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, the ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work god grace is sufficient in weakness in pain and suffering second corinthians 12 9 remember let's let's remind ourselves okay now remember like <laughs> paul is the first and the father so the events in the life of paul can be a point of reference for us in our personal situation paul he found himself in second corinthians chapter 12 in a situation in which he had this messenger of satan to buffet him because for the you know the abundance of revelation to keep him so to say under control and of course he didn't like this he prayed the lord about this three times and the answer of the lord said he said unto me the lord my grace is sufficient for thee for my strength is made perfect in weakness Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. These teachings are very important and are so uh, extraordinary in the sense that we know, don't we, when we are sick or we're going through difficult times, we want to be delivered, okay? If we are sick, we want to be healed. That's why we have doctors and hospitals and medicine and alternative medicine and everything. Nobody really enjoys or should be enjoying to be in difficult times or, you know, sick or whatever. Well, Paul learned a lesson that eventually we need all to learn as members of the body of Christ. That his grace, the grace of the Lord Jesus, is sufficient for us, members of the body of Christ. He said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. Why? That the power of Christ may rest upon me. This is the way a dead believer in, because he's dead in Christ, with Christ. We, we are dead with Christ. He says, but I'm still alive. You're, dead. You, you, you're alive in the body, but from God's point of view, you're dead with Christ. He sees Christ in you, the hope of glory. He doesn't see me, you. We're not really so special. I know it's really arts appeal to to swallow what me no yeah you me our flesh is good for nothing 
The power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul says, most gladly therefore will I rather glory my infirmities. <laughs> and the power of Christ may rest upon me. I have no illusion that just by doing this video, I fix this problem for myself and everybody. These teachings from the Word of God need to be re read and reread, studied and recited. Why? Because daily we face this reality. We are saved, we are sealed, we belong to the Lord for eternity. In reality, wouldn't be so super duper from our point of view that the very moment we believe we receive this gospel, God takes us straight away where we already seated in heavenly places. Yeah, from, a, from our point of view. <laughs> but God has his will. And the reason why the body of Christ is here to preach reconciliation. We have the word and the, tr the, the word and the, and the ministry of reconciliation. We are called to preach the gospel of the grace of God to all men, because God will have all men to be saved and to come to knowledge of the truth. And so why we're down here is un without a shadow of doubt, there's going to be sufferings in the flesh. Your first enemy is your flesh. That's the real enemy. Because it's dead, but still it's there kicking and pretending to have its, its share, you know what I mean? <laughs> Learning that we are dead with Christ is a very important lesson. And I want to tell you in total sincerity, I'm still learning after 12 years of studying those letters of Paul. Uh, remember that there is some people that are always learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. So you can study the Bible from many points of view, but if you don't get this most important passage or part, which is the dispensation of the grace of God, you're really missing out a lot. Hmm. The grace of our Lord was exceeding abound to save. Is written in 1 Timothy 1.14, and the grace of our Lord was exceeding, abound, abundant, my English is getting worse by the day, abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Our speech should be all the way, which is all the way, with grace, Colossians 4.6. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye might know how you ought to answer every man. Hmm. It is not natural for me, for you, to be like that. The flesh is where somebody opposes themselves. So I don't agree, you know, and they start debating. We want to, okay, now I'm going to fight and show you. I'm going to give you a good one. <laughs> That's a flesh, you know. Combative. My point, you know. No, 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 no. The teaching is the lesson to learn. Let your speech, speech means talking, be always with grace. Season with salt. The salt is the word of God, the, the, the wisdom of the word of God. And you might know how you ought to answer every man. We have the riches of God's grace. Ephesians 1 7. You see? Now, this verse here is here. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Now, this is a verse which is so powerful and still so ignored by the majority of us. It's not a question that when we come short, when we sin in any way, whatever it is, we have to confess our sins and ask for forgiveness and beg the Lord, please forgive me, I'm really sorry about this and I promise I'll never do this again. This is the joke. This is the route of the flesh. 
the scripture is very clear I don't know what in the world if it's a plane or something there is a horrible noise out there and my computer memory is playing up oh yeah no stop one moment all right so Yeah, I can't do anything. Okay. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. So, we are not redeemed <clears throat> through sacrifices that we do, prayers, fastings, or religious activities, rituals. We have now redemption through the blood of Christ and that includes the forgiveness of sins and that's according to the riches of his grace I wish I could just one moment organize this memory thing but it's not happening Redemption through his blood, meaning Oh man Okay. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. We who are saved receive an abundance of grace. Romans 5 17. For if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, the offense would be the offense of Adam, much more, and the line is much more in your mind, okay? They which receive, which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ, 
So how important is to be living in the dispensation of the grace of God? Fundamentally important. Grace abounds much more over sin and the law. <laughs> I mean, Romans 5.20 Moreover, the law entered that the offense may abound. Okay? So the law entered that the offense may abound. You never know how offensive is what you, you, you do, you think, the way you act, until the law tells you, don't, 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 do, 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 and you break it, you break it, you break it. The law shows you what kind of wicked, desperately wicked sinner you are. So the law entered, that the offense may abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. How important is it? Is it to be in the dispensation of the grace of God? Fundamentally important. God's grace reigns today, and I will stop with this. That's the last part. That as sin has reigned unto death, even so my grace reigns through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So, we are in the dispensation of grace. We are in the dispensation of the grace of God since Acts 9 till the catching up of the body of Christ. That's a blessing which is absolutely <clears throat> wonderful and glorious and we need to consider this. We need to learn this and learn how to express on a daily basis our gratitude and thankfulness to the Lord. Without what Christ has done, how he died, how that he died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, none of us, starting with me, would have any hope whatsoever, because whatever we do in the flesh, all the religious activity in the flesh, they are absolutely vain, worthless, God is not interested, and it's absolutely pointless. We need to simply believe and receive the gospel of the grace of God, Acts 20, 24, the gospel of Christ, the power of God unto salvation, and then learn that we are under grace, and grace does wonderful, wonderful, wonderful things for us. And we need to learn yeah God's will for your life now I'll finish with this salvation is God's will for you and other people first Timothy 2 4 will have all men to be saved to come to knowledge of the truth and he wants to, for us to come to the knowledge of the truth of the Bible rather than divided, to will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Giving thanks to God. In everything, give thanks for this the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And I stop for this. Okay, have a great day. I really hope that this helps. Sorry for all these technical problems, but my computer is what it is. Have a great day. A grace day. Amen.